Now we're going to be creating our random 2D offsets. We can use our random material function to create a random value between 0 and 1. For the seed, we want to use the flawed whole integer UV values we created just before. This ensures that the value we get will be the same across the entire cell, which is important for when we want to query the neighboring cell's 2D offset. Because of the predictable nature of the random value generator, we can use the gather technique mentioned in the last module to input the neighboring cell's 2D index and get its 2D offset. This currently though is only a float random value and we want a 2D random value. I'll create a second random node and plug in the seed UVs, but because they're in the same input, we get the same output. We can fix that by holding the two key and placing down a 2D constant node and an add node. And then we can add a non-zero vector to the input and that will change the seed and get a different result. The last thing we need to do to make this a 2D vector is to use the append vector node to turn two floats into a single 2D vector value. Previewing that shows what a random 2D vector looks like as colors. This is going to effectively push each cell into the next cell by subtracting the random 2D vector to the current cell UVs and causing it to go below the 0 to 1 range. Remembering back to the adding and subtracting clip in the last module, Subtracting UVs makes the texture appear to move in the positive direction when it's sampled. So we'll take the original 0 to 1 UV cells and subtract the random 2D offset. Also, remember that the order of subtraction matters here, so make sure you do subtraction in the right order. So previewing the result of that, we get this funny looking array of UV cells, which if you look carefully are all just the 0 to 1 range, but they've moved into the negative each cell but all in a different direction dictated by the random 2D vector. The beauty of the way this works is that it only ever goes into the neighboring cell and never goes over two cells because we're subtracting by a maximum of one on U and V. We can be sure that the resulting UVs randomly extend only to the neighboring cell. Let's see what our texture looks like when we use these UVs to sample our texture. Plug them into the UV slot and stop previewing the subtract node, and we'll see that each cell has indeed been offset by a random amount, and that currently the texture is repeating from its neighboring cell, because our texture is still in wrap mode, which is something we'll fix soon. I also think that this red color is a, looking a bit too much like blood for my taste, so I'll create a component mask and use just the red channel. I'll also multiply that with another color, just to create something that is nicer to look at. And plug it into the emissive slot to make it brighter and easier to see. Now let's go and change that wrap mode. Go to the texture sample node and in the details panel, go to the sampler source change from the default to explicitly use clamp. Now we see much more clearly how each cell has been offset in 2D by a random direction and amount. This is the very beginning of our texture splatting material. All we have to do now is query the left, top and top left diagonal neighbor cells for their offsets and we can do three extra queries to find out what bit of the texture was pushed into the current cell and sample it to draw the missing bits. Let's do a quick overview and do a bit of house cleaning here. We started with taking our UVs and multiplying them by a certain number of tiles. I'll take this section, hit the C key and give it a title of multiply tiles. Then we took those multiplied UVs and made them into whole integer tiles or cells. We then used those integer cells as seeds into a 2D random vector generator and I'll label that random 2D vector. Then we took the repeating 0 to 1 cells and subtracted the random vector to get our final offsetted UVs. In the next video, we'll go ahead and start setting up how we can sample the neighbor cells.